messaged you yesterday. I put it down. You messaged me just for a few minutes. I forgot to get back to you, but I'm good to go to be there. I said, okay. Good to be here. Yes, sir. Good to be here. Teaching them all, Yes, sir. I'll be at the middle school, eighth grade hall. I'll have the same class I had Friday.
sing and celebrate our wonderful Father's love for us. Singing songs about love this morning. If you'll turn over to page 107, Love Lifted Me. Let it lift you up this morning and as we sing praise to Him. And uh, let's uh, get this service off to the right start. Is anybody glad to be in God's house this morning? Amen. 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 All right, let's stand and worship. 107, Love Lifted Me. Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? Good morning. morning. Wonderful. Good, good. Um, just a couple announcements this morning. Wednesday night we'll be having our Valentine's Banquet at 6.30 p.m. 
Uh, come out and bring a finger food with you. We'd love to have you come and join us and have a lot of fun. Um, I heard Miss Rachel's going to come and dance for us. Oh, so I'm not missing. I ain't heard about. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get the memo. No. I ain't <laughs> well, you better shut up. She's going to take you out to the woodshed and paddle. <laughs> So come out prepared to have a lot of fun. Um, so uh, be here. Uh, you know, we, we just love to get together and fellowship. And so uh, uh, next <coughs> Sunday, um, me and Danetta will be in Florida visiting family and, and our grandbabies. Uh, next Sunday is Danetta's birthday. And she said the only thing she wanted for her birthday was to go see the, the kids and the grandkids. And uh, I said, I can make that happen. So... Uh, that's what we're going to do. Josh Sheely will be here next Sunday preaching for me. So uh, y'all come out and hear a good word from him. Amen. Yeah. So uh, I'm thankful for Josh and, and all he's done for Farmdale Baptist Church. And, uh, you know, anytime I ask him, uh, he's, he's there to step up. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, special prayer request. Um, continue to keep... Uh, Paul and Connie's family in your prayers as they lost his sister a uh, week and a half ago or so. Uh, then I heard this morning uh, that they, they both have strep throat. Mm. So keep them in your prayers because um, they just got a lot going on, going through a lot of a lot of problems. Uh, the Ziegler family um, had the funeral yesterday, and uh, so keep keep Gutson in your prayers as uh, he. He starts to try to figure out, you know, life now and uh, um, try to get his house back in order. He's had a, he's had a, a house full the last couple of days. And uh, so keep him in your prayers. Um, uh, little Anna, keep her in your prayers. Uh, she, she's been uh, up in Atlanta this past week with some different things going on. And uh, so keep, continue to keep her in your prayers. Um, Melinda Doyle, she uh, had broke her hip and had a replacement. Um, she's, you said she's coming home today. She's coming home tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. She's coming home tomorrow, mm -hmm. and so, uh, so uh, she's been at some rehab and stuff, and, and then she's gonna come home and have home health care, do some rehab with her. Uh, so continue to keep her in your prayers. Um, any other special prayer requests this morning? Melinda said to thank the whole the church, the church for the prayers. And that's what's got us through it. Amen. Prayer is powerful. Amen. Well, Amen. Vivian Wiggins. Vivian Wiggins. How, how is Dean? Huh? Dean, how's he doing? All right, talk to him. He's been, he's been real sick. And he's got some type of infection. We're trying to figure out what's going on. Who's that? Is that Ben Dent Wiggins? Dent Wiggins? Dent mm -hmm. Wiggins? That's stroke. Hmm? That's about her third or fourth right. stroke. Dent Wiggins? He's a pastor at, yeah, he's a pastor at uh, Antioch. Okay. He's, he's uh, going through cancer and Christmas and stuff now. And Miss Vivian's his mother. I, any others? Stacy Dennison asked if we'd add her name to the prayer list. S T A C I E D E N I S O N. Who is that, Justin? Stacy Dennison. All righty. The family of uh, Earlette Shank. She's being laid to rest today. What was Stacy's last name? Dennison. D E N I S O N. What was the other one? Earlette Shank. Family. Yeah, family, she passed mm -hmm. the services today. All righty. Any others? My brother-in-law, Don Hunter. 
Don Hunter. <coughs> and Donnie Jones. <coughs> Johnny who? Jones. All right. Mr. Wesley Hendricks, he's, he's uh, just had knee surgery about a week or so ago. What's his last name? Hendricks. Yeah, Hendricks. Hendricks. Yes, ma'am. All righty. Any others? All righty. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. <coughs> Father, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to come into your presence this morning. Lord, we come humbly before your throne, lifting up this prayer list to you, Father. Asking, Father, that you would be with each and every one that was mentioned here this morning. Uh, Father, we, we do continue to lift up to you, um, Paul and, and Connie Ewing, Lord, as uh, they uh, continue to uh, just go through some, some rough times, uh, Lord, with the loss of his sister and, and now dealing with this sickness of strep throat. And Lord, we just pray, Father, for them and ask, Lord, that you would be with them. Uh, Father, we do lift up to you, uh, Stacy. And Lord, just ask that you would be with her and the things that she's got going on. We do pray for this family that is laying their loved one to rest today. Lord, we just pray that you would be with them and comfort them and uh, just help them through these, uh, through today and the services, but also the days ahead. Uh, Lord, we pray for Wesley, Lord, and I pray that you'd be with him in the, the recovery that he's got going on, Lord. We pray, Father, for Vivian. And Lord, we pray, Father, that you would be with her in um, the health problems that she's got going on and, and the recovery and the things that she's dealing with. And uh, Father, uh, Miss Melinda, Lord, as she's going to be coming home tomorrow, Lord, we, we pray that uh, you would just be with her and strengthen her and give her the, uh, the, the things that she needs to be able to continue the rehabilitation that she needs, Lord, to be able to um, get back to walking and, and doing the things that she needs to do to continue life, Lord. We pray, Father, for uh, Dent Wiggins, and Lord, as he battles his cancer, that you would just be with him and help him, Father. Give him the strength each and every day. Lord, be with uh, Don Hunter and, and Donnie Jones, Lord, and, and their uh, health and their battles, Lord, each and every day. And Lord, be with little Anna, and Lord, we lift her up to you. Amen. Lord, we ask, Father, that you would be with this little child. Lord, we ask that you would just take care of her. Lord, that you may put a special touch upon her life. Lord, we thank you for this time you've given us to gather together as a body of believers, Lord, that we may come together corporately and lift up this prayer list. And Lord, that we may gather together to worship you. And Father, I do pray that you be with Farmdale Baptist Church, Lord, that we may honor you and glorify you in all that we do. Amen. And Lord, that we may um, just bring a smile and a blessing upon you, Lord and all that you'd have us to do. Amen. Lord, we come now to continue to worship you and to hear from you and all that you'd have us to do this morning. We ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Just, we need to, uh, Eddie, I know you come on Wednesday for the love of our we need to keep them in our prayer. Eddie, no. All right. Page 106, as we continue in our worship, page 106. This is a song about love that you don't hear sung much anymore, but it's a beautiful song. Love is the theme. So let's stand together. If you don't know it, you'll catch on real quick. Like, let's stand together as we worship all four verses. Again, page 106. Love <coughs> is the theme.
page 554. 554, this is a song about God's love for us, and it comes from the scriptures. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. If you'll turn over to page 554 again, this will be an offertory hymn. We'll ask our ushers to come forward this time to receive the tithes and offerings. Again, page 554. Praise to our Lord, the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
And Daddy, we didn't sing you last week. I forgot to do this earlier. Oh, you two no, have birthdays. Know. Yes, you do. And you thought you was going to get out of it by being <laughs> gone on your birthday. Hit me a chord, Joe. You know? <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. All right, happy birthday, happy birthday. Yeah, and uh, so our song for this morning is another song about love. The Father's love for us. There is no one that loves you more than your Heavenly Father loves you. Amen. And uh, I know that there's a lot of people that have spouses and children and grandchildren that you love with all your heart, but there is no one that has done more for you or loves you more than your Heavenly Father. So listen as we sing uh, about that love this morning. How deep the Father's love for us. Prepare our hearts for the message that Chris has for us this morning. This morning we're going to be in the Old Testament book of Joshua, the very first chapter. If uh, being right after Deuteronomy, we're going to continue our our series on church renewal. So we'll be in Joshua chapter one. Many will say we're living some of living in some of the best days 
in some of the most challenging days when it comes to American Christianity and the local church. Church life that existed 30 years ago no longer suffices as a vibrant, healthy church today. That's right. We can't do church like we did in the 70s or 80s or 90s or really even like we did in 2019. When COVID hit, it changed a lot of things. See, what drew the masses in the 90s and the 2000s will no longer compel potential church members to churches today. Sometimes we must ask ourselves, if we love our children and grandchildren enough to make the necessary changes within the church to bring them back to the Lord. There are a lot of churches that seem to have the philosophy that states, would the last one left alive please lock the door? Would the last one alive shut off the lights and lock the door? Let us not be a church with that philosophy. Amen. Selective memories have a way of distorting reality. A matter of fact, most of us think that our churches are okay. So many church members think of their church as just, they're okay. That their church is thriving. That their church is in great shape. But in 2018, there were 344,000 protestant churches in North America. And over 82% over of them were in decline or plateaued. Each year, year 3,500 to 4,000 churches die in North America. In 2018, there were 900 in the Southern Baptist Convention that closed their doors. Studies have shown that churches typically plateau in attendance by their 15th year. And by year 35 they have begun to have trouble replacing members that they lose. Dr. Bill Day, a professor at New Orleans Baptist Theology Seminary, reported that they were only 6.8% of Southern Baptist churches that were healthy, growing churches in 2017. That means that only 3,087 of the 45,727 Southern Baptist churches were healthy. Only 3,087 churches of the 45,072, 727 churches of the Southern Baptist Convention were healthy. And that was six years ago. We have churches that are unable to mount the necessary volunteers to carry on the work of the church because everyone has replaced available time with other commitments which take them away from the local church. Now, I'll tell you, I remember when I was in Little League ball that we never practiced or had ball games on Wednesday nights. And you never even thought of having anything on a Sunday. Now, they have travel ball that is Friday through Sunday. It's a day of transitioning for sure, and there are some churches which are transitioning to change to the changes that must be made in order for us to continue to be faithful to the Great Commission. And this transition does not mean that we transition away from the Word of God or change anything biblically. But the way we do things, the approach we take, the, the way we minister to people, we still keep the main thing the main thing, and the main thing is Jesus Christ. And the word that he has given us, which is the word, word of God. But understand that, that things change, that, that things changing is biblically. We see how things changed throughout scripture. But we don't change the message. Right. We don't change the gospel. Right. To see this, we're, we're going to look at the book of Joshua this morning, the first chapter. We come to a time when the Israelites are forced to transition. They really have no choice here. We're going to look at the first nine verses, and we're going to take five things from a, and see five things a church must do to transition. 
We're going to look at how God's people embraced a change that enabled them to, to receive the promise of God. So if you look with me at our text this morning, Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Starting in verse 1 there, it says, Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, cross the Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the son of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you, just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness and this Le uh, Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and as far as the great sea toward the setting, of the sun will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may make success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let's pray. Father, we come this morning asking that you may give us wisdom and guidance and direction, Lord. That we may be the people that you have called us to be. That we may be the body of believers that you would have us to be. So that we may impact this community the way you would have us to do. As Father, it's not about us. It is all about you. Amen. As Father, you are the main thing. Lord, help us to keep you the main thing. To put you as the main thing. In our individual lives and in our church life. So Father, I come now asking that you would uh, Allow your Holy Spirit to speak through me in a mighty and a powerful way. Lord, not my words, but thy words. Lord, I ask these things in the wonderful and precious name, the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now we're going to look at these five things as a church in transition must do. And the first thing we see is a church in transition <clears throat> must deal with its past. So there's a story of two Kentucky horse farmers who raced each other once a year. This race was very competitive. They both wanted to win so badly. So one year, this, this one horse farmer, he, he found a, a, a jockey to ride his horse. He, he went and got him a professional jockey. And this professional jockey, he, he filled the, the farmer with all these hopes and all these dreams of winning this race. So the race was off and running. It was a muddy day. They were neck to neck all the way around the track until the last turn. And when one horse slips and falls, knocking the both horses to the ground, the professional jockey does, does everything he can to get back up on the horse and get on his way. He does everything in his power to, uh, to win the race. He rides over to the, the owner who was mad. The jockey is so excited and he says, we won. The owner says, you don't know what you did, do you? The jockey replied, I, I know that I fell, but that happens. The important thing is, is that I got back up, I got on the horse, I finished the race, and we won. By this time, the owner is spitting mad. You got back up and on the horse, all right, but you got on the wrong horse. <laughs> when we fall off, we often get up back on the wrong horse. You've been there, and so have I. There is the horse of anger, the horse of jealousy, the horse of pride. Some struggle with the horse of wealth. 
Yet we have to do what we have to do is stop and look over, uh, stop looking over our shoulder towards the past and get back on the horse that God is leading toward victory and success. So many times there are so many things in our past that hold us back from being what God would have us to be. It, it may be that there was people in our past that 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 you know caused us from being who God really wanted us to be. And we have to quit looking in the past and see Israel had to deal with its past. In, the, in verse 2 there, the very first part, God tells, tells them, says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Can you imagine what the Israelites are feeling at that moment? Moses, my servant, is dead. We've got to remember where the Israelites are coming from. Moses has led the Israelites out of Egypt's bondage. They get to the Red Sea and they think, well, we're done for. God uses Moses to, to part the Red Sea so now they can cross the Red Sea. And then the, the, the Egyptians start to chase them across the Red Sea when all of a sudden God uses Moses now to collapse the Red Sea on top of the Egyptians, defeating the, the Egyptian army. Then... They want, they go through the, the wilderness all the way to the promised land. To get to the promised land, Moses sends in 12 spies and 10 of them come back and says, we can't defeat them. Two of them says, we got this. Joshua and Caleb. Two of them says, we got it. But we all know that the majority wins, right? Right? So they listen to the majority and says, well. So now they wander the wilderness for 40 years because 40 years at that time was considered a, a, a generation. So they had to wander for 40 years in the wilderness until that generation died off because that generation didn't want to be obedient to God. This was the land that God had already promised all the way back to Abraham. To his people. And Moses had done all these things. Provided them with food and water and all this stuff. And during these 40 years. And now here they are preparing to go into the promised land again. And Moses dies. Uh oh. Our leader is gone. What are we going to do? God says, Moses my servant is dead. What are they feeling? Here is the leader that God used. Moses, who has led them. Yet in the midst of this reality and challenge, God declares it's time to deal with the past. If you look clearly and sense God's divine inspired word, the Lord was declaring in this moment in time, hear my dear children of Israel. It was not the mere man who was leading you. It was I, the Lord your God, who led you, provided for you, protected you all those years. Moses was just the vessel right. that God was using. That's right. Moses was just the person, was just the vessel. But it was God using Moses and working through Moses. That's right. Have you ever stopped to consider that the work of the Lord is not hindered by the death or transition of His servant? That's right. That's right. The work of the Lord is never hindered by the loss of somebody. Or by the movement or the transition of somebody. No matter how the Lord has chosen to bless you or a church through a leader. When God decides to remove that leader. Whether it's a pastor, a deacon, or a, a, a Sunday school teacher. Maybe in your personal life. Maybe it's the loss of a, a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, or an uncle, a spouse. God still has a plan and a way for you or your church to move forward to accomplish the task he has called you to. Amen. There's still, he's still, I believe this with all my heart. If you've got a breath in your lung, God has a purpose for you. Amen. That's right. You say, well, pastor, you don't know my, my circumstances. Pastor, I am, I, I'm bound to my bed. You can pray, can't you? So the, the greatest prayer warriors this world has ever known have been homebound. That's right. 
The point to be realized here is that God will change hands to show that whatever means he uses, he is not tied to any single channel, any single person, any single leader. God is not... It, it, God is not tied to use Pastor Chris or Pastor Johnny or Pastor Ma Mark or Pastor Bob. He's not tied to use Deacon John or De Deacon Bill or De Deacon Bob or whoever. He's not tied to your parent or your grandparent or your aunt or your uncle. God can bless you through anybody, through any leader, through any person. My God is greater than those that are in charge. Yeah. Here he commissions Joshua to lead this new generation into a new challenge. It was the Lord God who had selected Joshua. It's a sad statement on any local church when its membership depends so greatly on their leader. The under-shepherd of God, when, when a transition takes place, the church is crippled for a time. If we depend on, on a leader or a, a Sunday school teacher or a grandparent or a parent, we can become crippled spiritually. What we need to be depending on during these times and any time for that matter is a God who is seated in the holy place and ready and able to lead his children to great and greater victories. Although the word, of, all throughout the word of God, God is leading his church to new horizons, new victories all the time. And one thing is clear and certain. Just like the Israelites, we cannot stay in Egypt's bondage and still cross over the victories offered within the promised land. The Israelites would have never got to the promised land if they would have stayed in Egypt. That's right. When Moses said, come follow me, they would have never got to the promised land if they had stayed in Egypt. But it's when we look to the past and live in the past that the past can actually defeat us and keep us from experiencing the great and wonderful blessings God has for each and every one of us in the presence. Amen. And, and there's so many things that are in our past. We say, well, you know, I got, you know, my past, I, you know, I got a record this long. Or, or I, I, I did this and I did that. You, when God saves us, he takes that, that past and he wipes it clean. He erases it. I always think of it like a chalkboard. And, and our sins are written on that chalkboard all up and down. And when God saves us, he takes the eraser and he erases that chalkboard. It's cleaned off. It's all gone. He says we're a new creature. We're, we're new. We're new. The past is gone. That's right. The first thing he charges the, the Israelites and Joshua with is, he says, my servant, in verse 2, he continues there, he says, my servant Moses is dead. Now, therefore, arise and cross the Jordan. It is the Lord Jesus Christ which lovingly commands this church and any church, for that matter, to follow. It is when we are following that there is no room for procrastination. When we are following Jesus, when we are keeping our eyes on Jesus, that we can't procrastinate. That we can't, well, you know, if this. Well, if that. If we're going to be obedient, we must follow God completely. That's right. See, because 80% obedience is still disobedience. That's it. Let me tell you, 99.9% .9 obedience is still disobedience. That's right. Well, you know, God wants me to do this, and, and, and I'll do all this, but I, I just can't do that one little thing right there. That's obedience, right? No. Because if you're not going to surrender to that one spot there, you're, you're being disobedient. You're being disobedient. We can't stay where we are. We must faithfully move forward. We can't say, well, you know, we're, we're going to do all of this, but we got to keep this. We got to keep doing this, but we'll do everything else. No, if God says do this, we got to do all of this. That's right. He didn't say go and, and, and 
proclaim the word of God. And we say, well, we're proclaiming the word of God. But we ain't going. But we ain't going. He said, go forth and proclaim the word of God. The second thing we see is a church in transition must develop his plan. To develop God's plan, we must first find his strategy and plan. In verses 3 and 4 of our text, it says, Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given to you, just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and as far as the great sea, toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. Again, he, God has already promised all this to, to, to Abraham, all the way back to Abraham. God had promised the promised land. And since Joshua had, had this threefold task to accomplish, God gave him three special promises, one for each task. First, God would empower Joshua to cross the river and claim the land. The river Jordan wasn't just some little creek to cross. The river Jordan's a, a pretty good sized river. It, it's deep and it's fast flowing. So it's not like you're just going to walk up to it and skip across it. You know, it, it, it comes up higher than your knees. Secondly, he, he would embolden Joshua so he could defeat the enemy. And the last of the three special promises God gave Joshua was that he would also, uh, he would allow, allocate the land to each tribe as its inheritances. And God didn't give Joshua explanations. He would expect that when one trusts God's promises and steps out in faith, one could be sure that the Lord will give them the directions needed when they need them. God didn't give Joshua a step-by-step -step game plan. He, he said, cross the land, cross the river, and go into the land. He didn't tell him, okay, this one goes to here, and this one goes to there, and this to... He gave him kind of a, a play, but he says, you step out in faith. Cross that river, and then I'll kind of go from there. But first, you've got to step out in faith. That's right. you you got to, okay, God, I mean, how do you want me to cross this, you know, mighty flowing river right here? The Lord within this passage of Scripture had already given them the territory, but they had not discovered it yet. They had to find where God was working. Henry Blackaby, known for experiencing God, and if y'all didn't hear, he passed away yesterday. Experiencing God, he's known for experiencing God, and what a mighty man of God, and he was experiencing God yesterday, and he's experiencing God today. But anyways, he says in that study, find out where God is working and join him. Yep. Find out where God is working and join him. God has already given us things, but we still have to find them and develop them. God doesn't just expect us to sit here and, and wait for him to bring everything to us and drop it in our lap. You know, I say this before. We, we pray, Lord, you know, help me find a job. We can't just sit there in the chair and wait for the phone to ring. Now, I'm not saying God ain't that powerful. I've had it happen. You know, to be praying for a job and somebody call me and say, hey, you know, I, I, I'm needing this. I, you know, we're getting busy and I'm, but I've been putting out other applications too. See, God says, you know, you're praying for a job, get up off your lazy butt and put in some applications. Sure. Be also actively looking. Scripture says, you know, those that aren't willing to work ain't going to be willing to eat either. Right. You know, in other words, we got to be willing to go forth and do what he's called us to do. He ain't going to just drop it in our lap. Find out where God is working and join him. The second thing we need to do to find his plan and develop it is we need to finish his design and plan. In verse 5 of our text it says, No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. They were promised no man shall be able to stand. D does this mean that they're, they're not going to face any wars? No, they're fixing to go in and conquer the promised land. They're fixing to go in and defeat all these, 
these cities and all these people that are in the promised land. They're going to face war. But what God meant there is he's going to provide the victory. That's Amen. right. He's going to provide the victory. Yeah, they're going to face trials and tribulations in life. We're going to face opposition in life. But Jesus said, I have overcome the world. That's right. John 16, 33, Jesus said there, These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But take courage, I have overcome the world. Amen. We're, we're going to see, we're going to be faced with trials and tribulations in life. Jesus said the world's going to hate you because they already hated me. But we're given this, this promise that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Yeah. That's right. Did you know that, that that promise is repeated in other scriptures? Yep. 1 Chronicles 28, 20. It says there, Then David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and courageous and act. Do not fear nor be dismayed for the Lord God. My God is with you. He may not fail you nor forsake you until all the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. Amen. It was given to each and every one of us in the New Testament in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. It says there, Make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. So that we have confidence saying, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? The greatest news for each and every one of us is that God does not change. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. The Jesus that walked the earth 2,000 years ago is the same Jesus today. That's right. He didn't change. He went to earth. He went to heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father, and he's still in bodily form. And when we get to heaven, whether it's tomorrow or another, you know, 20, 30 years from now, he'll still be in bodily form. That's yeah. right. Yes, he's in heaven. But he's the same as he was 2,000 years ago as he is today, and he'll be the same tomorrow or another 100 years from now. That's right. As a believer, we are told we should have courage. And the exciting thing about that is, is that we are provided through the Word of God with that much needed courage. In verse 8 of our text, it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. For you see the commands and promises found in these verses set out the covenant relationship between God and his people. Yeah. On God's side, he chooses Israel to inherit the land. On Israel's side, they must now, by faith, claim the gift. It's like salvation. The gift is there, but we have to claim it by faith. That's right. As a church, we must trustingly obey the Lord's command to evangelize the world. We're not promised peace when we do that. We're not promised that we will have peace when we go out and evangelize the world. But we are promised the peace of God in the midst of any crisis. We're going to be faced with trials and tribulations. But Jesus said, I'll give you peace. The peace of God. Our calling is not one of ease. We're not told that the, the Christian life will be a life of, uh, of cake. But it's one of endurance. He's called us to endure all these things. And the lesson of God's people in his church today is clear. God has given us all spiritual blessings in Christ. In Ephesians 1, 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And we must step out by faith and claim these the blessings. So what more could we desire that than what God has said to us in verse 5. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. As Christ's followers, we can count upon Jesus. And his strength will displace our weakness. I love where he says, where I am, where you are weak, I am strong. Amen. 
His strength will displace our fears and replace it with courage. That's right. The third thing we need to do to develop his plan is have faith in his provisions and plan. In verse 6 of our text it says, Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. In the same way, Joshua had nothing to worry about because God was going to be with him just as he was with Moses. The Lord wasn't going to just walk away because Moses was gone. The Lord was going to be with Mo, uh, Joshua just the same. And Joshua could be strong and, and of good courage because God is giving this land to Israel. It, it wasn't that God was saying, okay, you now got to go in on your own and, and take this. God was going to be there. God was going to deliver the land. God was providing the land. And Joshua must unwaverly have faith in God's plan. When we start to implement God's plan, the going will get tough. We must have faith that God will do what he said he would do. And before God could fulfill his promise, Joshua had to exercise faith. He had to be strong and of good courage. He had to, he had to actually start stepping out into the Jordan River and, and, make, and show that faith that, hey, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go. I'm going to follow God's plan. God's sovereign word is an encouragement to God's servant to believe God and obey his commands. In short, God's promises are prods, not pillows. God's promises are given to encourage us to do with all our hearts and might whatever he has called us to do. Amen. We're not going to get through the whole sermon today. We still got three more points to make. We'll stop there for today. But we need to see and realize that it takes faith. To do what God has called us to do. Amen. To be who God has called us to be. That when God starts to stir us up and, and transition us to be the church, the people of God that he's called us to be, we got to have faith. Because when he starts to, to stir us up and to point us in the direction he'd have us to be, it causes uncomfortable times sometimes. It, it causes us to, to be in, in positions sometimes it's not always comfortable. There, there, there will be times of difficulties, times of, of, of discouragement, but we have to have our faith. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus, and we've got to show our faith and exercise our faith. And remember, as he says more than once in just these nine verses, be strong and of good courage. And remember that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the words that you have given us today. That we may be reminded that no matter what we face in this life, that no matter what we are put up against, that you are always there with us. That you will never leave us nor forsake us. And that we can always have the faith that we can have courage and be strong no matter what the trial or tribulation is that we face. So, Father, I pray that you would guide us and direct us. And, Father, I pray that if there's anyone here today that you've just stirred their hearts, Lord, maybe you've showed them that there's things in their lives that need to change, the need to transition. Lord, maybe they've held on to things in the past for too long and it's time to put them things away. It's time to move away from the past and move forward. Lord, I pray that you would work in their lives right now. Lord, I pray that they would know that the altars are open. Lord, that I'm here to pray with them. And Lord, as you stir, that we may move. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You stand and sing with us. Page 423 is our hymn of invitation. I need thee every hour. I need thee, oh, I need thee. 423 as you stand to your feet. Amen.